It is a pleasure for me to be able to come to you in this form on today. I want to welcome each and every one of you again to our church at home experience and even all of our visitors, all of the loved ones. Uh, we just want to say thank you for tuning in on today and that we pray that you have been blessed and that you will experience a better life through our ministry. Well, we would like to take this time to welcome you to our midweek services. On Wednesday nights, please join us in our prayer and Bible study at 7 p.m. That's Wednesday at 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study on the GoToMeeting app. You can find the information to log on or to dial in there on your screen. Remember, Wednesday, 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. As well, on Fridays, join our pastor, Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair Sr., and our prayer warriors for noonday prayer. That's Friday at noon, also using the GoToMeeting app. We know that you would be blessed by the work of the ministry through these midweek services. God bless you today. I get excited when it's time to give an offering to the Lord because I know that my church is still working to make sure the gospel message is going all throughout this world. Hallelujah. Well, there are four ways that you can give on today. The first way is through PayPal, and you can access our PayPal account through the email address blcgiving at gmail.com. blcgiving at gmail.com. The second way is through Cash App. And that address is the cash tag, Better Life Cogent. That's cash tag, Better Life Cogent. You can also give by way of Givelify. If you have the Givelify app, download it on your Apple or Android device. Search for our church name, Better Life Church, and look for our logo, Give by way of Givelify. Lastly, you can mail those gifts into our sanctuary. The address is 2101 Atlantic Avenue, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. That's 2101 Atlantic Avenue, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's once again I come to you thanking you, O God, for you are the source of all of our resources. God, we thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And God, we thank you because we stand today with gifts in our hands. God, we stand with our tithes. We stand with our offering, oh God, continually trusting you to take care of us. Oh God, as you use us to take care of your ministry. Now, Father, I pray that you would bless the giver uh, God, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Oh God, that you would rebuke the devourer on their behalf. And God, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, for they all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, and welcome to the Better Life Church of God in Christ, Church at Home Experience. We come to worship and magnify the name of the Lord. For God is indeed holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, a song shall rise to thee. Let us worship God 
in the beauty of holiness. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come before the Lord with singing and praise him, all ye people. Let us pray at this time. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our God. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy passion they fail not. And as thou has been, thou will ever be. Eternal and everlasting God. I stand in the presence of you now, asking, O oh God, for forgiveness of all that we have done that wasn't like you. But here we come to pray, God, those who are listening and watching this telecast. We pray, God, that we will turn our minds and our hearts to you because we have come into this place to worship to give you the glory, to give you the praise, to give you the honor. You've been good to us, God. And as we worship you today, we pray, God, that you would touch from the crown of our head down to the sole of our feet. Oh, God, we want to recognize you as the King of kings and Lord of Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Come in today. As we worship you, we worship you in this place and we depart, God, to serve. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Come on, lift your voice, everybody, and say, Praise Him. Oh, praise. Lift your voice. your voice everybody praise him hallelujah
your bow. Jesus. And every tongue shall confess. Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed Savior. Oh. Everybody lift your voice and give God the praise. Good morning. Our scripture reading for today is coming from 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at the 23rd verse and going down to the 25th. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. This is the word of God. Maker died for man 
the creature sin. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Hallelujah. Let's sing the last verse. Thus might I hide my blushing face. Thus might I hide my blushing face. While his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time as we celebrate church at home and God has given us this opportunity to share with you from the word of the Lord. And I truly am blessed today to have this opportunity to do so. And before I go any further, I would like to say, as I always say, thank you for your support, for your prayers, for your love and we pray that God's blessing will be continuously upon you and your lives and your family all the days of your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now because you are a good God and there is none like you in all the earth. We thank you for the joy that fills our soul. We thank you for the praise and the worship. We thank you for the hymns. We thank you for the songs of Zion. We thank you, God, because we have an advocate and we have a savior and we have a Lord. And today we pray that you will let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Praise God, amen, amen. Today we want to uh, deal with a familiar passage of scripture and I'm gonna be using a few scriptures today to share with you and hopefully it would encourage your heart that we will hold to God's hand, his unchanging hand, and build our hopes on things eternal, that God may bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Let's look at the scripture here in Psalms 23. Psalms number 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God for the reading of the word. And I would just like to go back 
uh, just one verse from the end where we find Psalms 23 and 5. This is primarily what I want to focus on today in our teaching. It says in Psalms 23 and 5, Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Today I want to talk from the subject, what's in your toolbox? What's in your toolbox? On last week, we spoke about praying with a listening ear. And we noticed that as we traveled through, we began the discussion about uh, having a toolbox or a spiritual toolbox within your arsenal. So you will have some things, some divine things that you can go to, uh, that you can rely on, that you have conditioned yourself in so that God will bless you to not go in it alone. But God wants you to go into it with the anointing. And today I want to talk about the anointing. We had talked and discussed about having the whole armor of God. We talked about having the fruits of the spirit. But today I want to kind of bring out last week's lesson and go back into directly strategically target certain points that I have made because I don't want to go through too fast and, and you miss the message. But we know that from last week that we must be able to hear God. When God is speaking, we need to have a ready and a trained ear. And that's going to take some work. So today we want to ask you the question again, what's in your toolbox? When we go out to work on the cars, when we go out to do various things, it's a terrible thing for you to have a flat tire or to have something to go wrong and you not have the right tools. I was blessed a few years ago to have a late model car and I was about 60 miles outside of Virginia headed towards home in a rural area, which means that there weren't many gas stations, there weren't many stores and there weren't many things. And what had happened a week prior to that, I had gotten my car service in its regular service time. But a few days later, while I was on the highway, I had a flat tire. And being able to go in to change the tire, I went to attempt to change the tire. And when I went to attempt to change the tire, it had a lock on the wheel. And you notice on most late model cars, it has a lock on the wheel. And I could not find that lock. There was a trucking company about 30 miles away uh, in the city of Franklin. And uh, the person at this little store that I stopped by said, well, we can't help you. But uh, what you may have to do is call for those big wreckers. And the only thing they have are those big wreckers and they will come and help you get your tire changed. He said, but even we don't think we have that tool to unlock that uh, wheel so that you can change the tire. It only took about a couple of minutes to change the tire, but because I did not have the right tool in my arsenal, or I did not know what tools I had, because I was thinking that when I got my car serviced, that I would use it, that I had the tool. And I did because they rotated my tires. But when the mechanic got through working on my car, he put the lock, the, the key to unlock the tire in another place. So while I was looking all over the place, a young gentleman came and he went and looked uh, in my trunk and he said, there it is right there. You know, I would have been stranded or I would have had to pay a hundred and something dollars just to have a regular tire change. But because I had the right tool, I was able to do what I needed to do. My brothers and my sisters, you got to be equipped. You got to be ready. You got to know that God is with you and that he's not not only giving you life, but he's giving you the power to sustain life. So today we want to talk about one of those tools in our toolbox, which is the anointing. Hallelujah. Is the anointing in your toolbox? We talk about having ready tools for spiritual and physical warfare. We talk about being prepared as Christians. When we talk about our victory, Beginning with healing and listening, we talk about having the right tools because we need to be able to hear God. We need to be able to listen to God. We need to be able to know that God is there. 
And we want you to, you to understand that hearing is a physical component, but listening is a mental component. And when you have the anointing of Jesus Christ on the inside of your heart, you can hear God better. You can hear God when he speaks and you can hear God when he moves. The anointing is so very important because it is an essential part of our survival kit. Let me re remind you in the scripture that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in verse five again, it says, thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And then it goes on to say, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we've spoken of previously, Isaiah 10 and 27, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I want the anointing because I want to be able to fight off, to break off those yokes that may be around my neck, those struggles that I may be going through, those personality issues that I might be going through, those mental challenges can be like a yoke. But God, give me the anointing. God, give me a fresh anointing so that I will be able to stand in these evil and last days. We need the anointing. And here in 1 John 2 and 20, it says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. Hallelujah. When we have the unction, which is the unlimited access of knowledge through the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The unlimited access of understanding through the Spirit of God. If we would allow our spiritual ears to be unctionized by the power and the anointing of our God. The unction, which is the anointing, is a consecrated thing. Hallelujah. Made or declared sacred by God. Hallelujah. The unction is consecrated by God. Hallelujah. God lays his hands on you. God puts his anointing on you. God gives you favor in the midst of the storm. And I would just like to look at a few definitions here. Uh, and I want, to rec want you to recognize that the anointing is a God-given right. It's a God-given ritual. It's a God-given endowment. Hallelujah. Someone said, the scripture says, and ye shall receive power from the Holy Ghost, and it, you shall be endued with power. You shall be clothed with power from on high. So this act of anointing is a right. Hallelujah. It's a celebration. It's a consecration. It's separating, being separated for the the glory and the honor of God. God takes personal intent about you and your anointing. All you have to do is just receive him and let him do what he does in your life. The anointing is like having an ointment rolled upon your body. Hallelujah. The oil of God's power is an ointment, ornament that you need every day of your life. It is a religious and a spiritual fervor, hallelujah, or the expression of such fervor, hallelujah. God gave his son, hallelujah, and his son gave his life. Therefore, we have the anointing that's just like oil that's running down our bodies or running in our bodies, smoothing our bodies out and giving us a healing anointing, giving us a healing ointment upon our lives. This anointing in the Old Testament was referred to as the all. It was primarily referred to as the all. And in the New Testament, it is primarily referred to as God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. David said, thou shall, thou anointeth my head with oil. In the no Old Testament, you just, you know, had the oil in many cases. But in the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost, ga God gave us a new oil. Hallelujah. He gave us an oil that not just is a topical ornament, just not go on our hands and on our head and down our legs and like Aaron's beard, not just going down like it's an ornament or oil that's coming on our bodies, but an oil that is going into our spirits, our hearts and our souls. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. And today we want to focus in 
on some of these aspects of the, the anointing. What was God trying to do? And what, what is God saying about this? And I would like to look at four points of views as we go to our lesson on today. We want to look at purpose. We want to look at favor. We want to look at power and healing. When you have the anointing, you have a purpose through that anointing. You have favor with God, power, and you have healing. Purpose is the why. Hallelujah. I say this all the time. Purpose is the why. You ought to ask yourself the question, why? Hallelujah. There are many things that you could go through and say, well, why this and why that? And what about this? And what about that? You are not just here. Oh, hallelujah. Just to be here, just to look like a flower uh, standing by the wayside. But you are here because God has purpose in your life. God has designed that you have purpose in your life and that you could live according to his glory. There must always be a why. Even in those most insignificant things, there must always be a why. Hallelujah. God has given us the intelligence to say, Lord, why? Why this? And why that? Why me? Moses said, why me, God? Hallelujah. But God had chosen him to do a mighty work. And God is choosing you today. There is something specifically, something uh, peculiar. There's something awesome that God wants you to develop in. In. Whether you are young or old, hallelujah, until the day we die, we're developing, we're learning, we're embrace, embracing God's favor upon our life, God's purpose upon our lives. Hallelujah. Whatever you are doing in life, there is a why. If you can't see it, you are not paying attention. Maybe you are afraid to see it. A lot of people know that God is calling them. A lot of people know how God wants them to live, but they're just afraid of it. Hallelujah. That's a spiritual thing. You need to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I receive the spirit of God. The Bible declares that we should not quench the spirit of God. And as God gives us salvation, as God gives us hope, he is looking for us to surrender. Say, Lord, I surrender all unto you. Maybe. You are afraid to see what God is doing for you. God made you to be somebody and to do something. Let me say that again. God made you to be somebody and God made you to do something. Hallelujah. But not just doing anything. Hallelujah. But doing what you are purposed to do. Doing what you were raised to do. Hallelujah. Many times we are down the road in our lives as we get older. And while we are young, we are asking God, say, Lord, well, what is what? Why am I here? What am I doing here? And we find out as we go further that our purpose becomes revealed in our lives when we started looking at our gifts and our talents and our anointing. God will show you the way. Hallelujah. You were made to be change agents. You were made to be co-inhabitors on earth. We're not here on an island by ourselves, but we are here and we need every one of us, hallelujah, to survive. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, I need you and you need me. Hallelujah. We are all part of God's creation and we have a specific purpose. We all should be a Christian light in a dark and dying world. God made you to be the head and not to be the tail. God made you to, to be a part of his glory, to be a part of the glory of God and the testimony of God. You don't have to be the best. Let me say that so you can clearly understand it because a lot of people hung up on being the best. When I was growing up in school and I played the trombone in the band, the whole time I played the trombone in the band, I was in the first chair. Hallelujah. But then as I began to go to citywide uh, events and statewide events, I learned there were some other people that were just as good or better than I was. I didn't get sorrowful because we were all there for the same purpose. Hallelujah. God did not get you to be the best 
in everything. Hallelujah. But you should be on the winning team. Hallelujah. You don't have to be the best. And even though if you are the best, just humble yourself so it won't go to your head. Hallelujah. But if you're on the winning team, hallelujah. I know some players that played in the NBA finals and they're getting ready to walk around now if they haven't with a, a NBA finals ring and they did not spend one minute, one second on the basketball court when LeBron James and the other uh, defenders were getting the championship ring, but they were on the team. Hallelujah. They were in there with the winning team. Hallelujah. We praise God for that. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you might be the best at assisting. Sometimes you might be the best at passing the ball. Sometimes you might be the best at supporting. You don't necessarily have to be out front. Hallelujah. One of the things that got me in trouble in my early days, I hated being out front. Hallelujah. But I didn't know that I would end up being out front because I was running from being out front. Hallelujah. But we, we recognize that God wants us to be on the winning team. God wants us to have the best and the best is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Having the anointing is like having the Lord with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. It is the highest form of intelligence that you can have. Remember, the scripture says we have an unction and we know all things. The anointing is the highest form of intelligence. Hallelujah. Sometimes my wife would get sick and the Lord would tell me what was going on in her body before the doctors would confirm it. Hallelujah. God will speak to you. The only thing you have to do is ask God to speak to you. Hallelujah. Why, why the anointing? Hallelujah. Why should we be anointed? My answer to that is why not? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In everything you do, having the anointing gives you truth and power. Hallelujah. It gives you truth and power. Favor. I want to talk about favor. Yes, it is for you. God has chosen you for kingdom living. Hallelujah. God has chosen you to live in peace and righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. God has chosen you not to have a lot of drama going on in your life, but to be able to stand, hallelujah, and to be the example and to be the light of the world. He's chosen you because he loves you. Hallelujah. My God. God chose you because he had so much love for you. Hallelujah. He gave you his best. Hallelujah that you can be at your best. Hallelujah. You may not be the best, but you can be at your best. Hallelujah. And that can add to the victory of the team. Hallelujah. You are favored. You are favored in God's eyes. Hallelujah. God added his favor with fervor. Hallelujah. And fervor is nothing more than passion. And if you want to know what passion is, passion is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting everlasting life fervor is passion and passion is the love of God the love of God that gave Jesus the power hallelujah that gave him the willingness to go to the cross to die to be spit upon to be tortured to be a person that treated like the enemy that passion of God gave us for his life for our life and for the lives of every believer. So this fervor, this passion comes and it gives us love. It gives us grace. It gives us forgiveness. He lived for you. Christ lived for you. Christ died for you. Christ rose for you. Christ is knocking at your door. Jesus is knocking at at your door. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Come on now. Listen to me. God is knocking at your door. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God worked with you on last week. God ministered to you on last week. And right now is just no happenstance that you are here listening to what I'm saying. God wants you to surrender your life so that you can have the best life and be on the best team. That's what the anointing, the sacred anointing does. He is always there with you. He is always there for you. He's always there 
advocating on your behalf. Hallelujah. When the devil said that you won't make it, when the devil said you can't make it, God is there on your behalf. Hallelujah. You are God's favorite. I get in trouble all the time because I have a lot of nieces and nephews. Hallelujah. And sometimes I forget to remember which one was my favorite one when I'm in the presence of, of one or the other. Oh, my goodness. So you don't want to get into that kind of trouble. But you are God's favorite. You are God's favorite. Hallelujah. God loved you so much. Hallelujah. He cherished you so much. He gave you everything that he had. First Peter two and nine says ye are but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness. Come on out of the dark. Hallelujah. Into the marvelous light. John 15 and 16 says ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordain you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask to the Father in my name. That's why you need the anointing. Hallelujah. That's why you need a relationship with God. Because there are some things that you can ask him for. Hallelujah. Regardless of your age. There are some places that you can go in God. There are places that you can go on this earth just by asking God. Hallelujah. You can ask God to take away the fear. Hallelujah. Here we are in an economic crisis. Here we are in a pandemic. Here we are in a a political crisis, but you can ask God, say, God, give me peace. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm going to put my dependence upon you. I'm not going to be afraid because at the end, hallelujah, no good thing would you withhold from me if I continue to walk upright. Let me finish this scripture. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, he may give it you. Then we have power. Hallelujah. Power, my strength, my abilities is wrapped up in my power. Where there is strength, there is authority. Let me say that again. Where there is strength, there is authority. God has given us authority. He has given us his power. Hallelujah. Not our own power. And that's why the anointing is so powerful, because we need God's power. We need God's anointing. Hallelujah. You can't anoint yourself and be successful in almost anything. Hallelujah. It has a time stamp on it. But when you get a God anointing, it is lifelong. It is purposeful. It is powerful to the umpth degree. God will help you. God will bless you. God will cause everything that he's designed you for, that he's purpose you for to be a part of your life. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. We can't settle for nothing less than what God wants for us. All we have to do is allow him to give it to us. He is knocking at your door. He is calling on you right now. He is waiting for you to allow the spirit of God to persuade you. Hallelujah. And the power of God to convert you for the grace of God to bring about change in your life. You must work for power. Hallelujah. You must work for that power. We must go deeper in the word. We must go deeper in our prayer lives. We must go deeper in our praise and our worship. We must go deeper in our faith. Don't take my word for it. Hallelujah. Or anybody else's word. Read it for yourself. Get to know God for yourself. Walk with him for yourself. Just take, if you have to take baby steps, the more baby steps you take, the better and the longer you will keep on walking. Hallelujah. You must be filled. God has given us dominion and power. And through the anointing, we have that dominion and power. Look at Genesis 1 and 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Hallelujah. God didn't want you to be a, don't want you to be a failure. He said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
Acts 1 and 8 tells us, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Finally, God gives us, through the anointing, healing power. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not only does he restore, but he renews. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. God can make the old new again. God can refresh and revive. He is the God that heals. Hallelujah. Healing brings about hope. Hallelujah. And hope gives us way to faith. Hallelujah. If you have hope and if you use faith, God will bless you in many, many ways. This is the season for and of refreshing. God has brought many of us, even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, God is refreshing somebody right now. Hallelujah. This pandemic, have, even though we've had lost so many lives, but God is saving lives. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of the pandemic. Don't you die with coronavirus in your, in your flesh and in your body and not take the Lord as your Savior because we all are here for a period of time. But if we don't have the Lord in our lives, there is eternal damnation for our souls. I know people don't want to talk about this, but this is the truth. This is what we need to share with the people of God throughout this world. Hallelujah. This is the place to rejoice. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. God is a healer. Hallelujah. This is the right place right now to rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a good time to testify. You, say, you may say, Pastor, I'm not healed yet, but I'm thanking God for my healing and I'm thanking God because he He's, he's given me the opportunity to testify that I'm healed by the grace of God. I'm healed by the power of God. I'm healed by the anointing of God. Hallelujah. I see myself being healed in the future and I'm rejoicing now. Hallelujah. I'm rejoicing even in my affliction. I'm rejoicing even in my pain. I'm rejoicing even in my tears. I'm rejoicing. Don't wait till the struggle is over. Rejoice now. Hallelujah. Shout now. Hallelujah. Rehearse now. Hallelujah. God, I got to get my praise on. I got to figure out how I'm going to dance. Hallelujah. How I'm going to shout. Hallelujah. How I'm going to move. Hallelujah. Before this victory comes. I mean, you may be laying in that hospital bed. Hallelujah. You can't get up out of that hospital bed. You can't. You can't. Hallelujah. Pull those tubes out of you, but you can just blink your eye. Hallelujah. And your eye signifies that I'm I'm not waiting till the battle's over. I'm not waiting till I'm completely healed, but I'm going to shout now. You may be able to move your toes and wiggle your toes and wiggle your hands. Rejoice in advance because I know that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And I know that he's a God that heals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why you got to testify, the reason why you got to praise God because Proverbs 13 and 12 says hope deferred maketh the heart sick hallelujah but when the desire cometh hallelujah it is a tree of life hallelujah it is a tree of life when the desire comes, and that's the reason why you got to be healed getting healed is a have to he getting healed is a must do getting healed must happen because every time I get healed hallelujah it's a tree of life every time God delivers me from one storm to the other it is a tree of life every time God opens doors that have been closed in my face it is a tree of life and I'm blessing the Lord now I'm praising the Lord now because there's no God like my God oh my goodness he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake hallelujah hallelujah Oh, my goodness, Matthew, and I got to bring this thing to a close. Matthew 4 and 23, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. And God blessed them. Jesus blessed them. 
because of the anointing. Jesus blessed them because of the power. That might seem like a lot, but what do you have in your toolbox? What do you have? Hallelujah. Do you have favor? Hallelujah. Do you have purpose? Hallelujah. Do you understand your purpose? Do you have power? Hallelujah. Is there healing? Hallelujah. Moving or accessible in your toolbox? Well, if it's not, hallelujah, you've got work to do. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember that it's not about you. It's about him. And God will get the glory out of your life. Remember that the anointing, hallelujah, we are to be praying and singing and asking, asking God to let the anointing fall on me. And let the power of the Holy Ghost, the oil of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that oil that gets on the inside, hallelujah, that comes from the inside out. Let the oil of the Holy Ghost come from the inside out and bless my soul. Hallelujah. And if you bless me, God, I'm going to give you the praise and the glory for the rest of my life. So today, my brothers and my sisters, what's in your toolbox? You need to check it. Hallelujah. Make sure you have it. Hallelujah. Because you're going to be tested and you're going to be tried. And God wants you to be in the right spirit when that challenge and when those dark days comes in your life. And he will bless you. He will always be with you because you are God's favorite. Hallelujah. You are God's favorite. Yes. Yes. You. Yes. You. I'm talking to you. You see me talking to you. Hallelujah. You are God's favorite. Hallelujah. And God wants the best for you. And God wants you on the winning team. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now because of the joy that fills my soul, because of the message that you've given us today, that we as children of God must be equipped to go through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, to stand and be witnesses and to be courageous and to be contagious for Christ. God, I pray now that you would touch the listening audience, the viewing audience, that they would rehearse these things in their spirit and in their minds, and that you would give them a, a change, that you would bring about a change in their lives. Give them hope for tomorrow and joy, even in the midst of sorrow. We thank you now for the word that have come on today. And we give you the glory, we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior on today, you can accept him now. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, I know you died, was buried, and you rose on the third day. For the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, dear God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, touch my heart, let the Spirit of God be a part of my life, and let me grow in your grace. I confess and I believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And I thank you now for what you're doing in my life and for, for the things that you're gonna do. If you said those words, then God has saved your soul. And go, hallelujah, learn more about Jesus. Grow in his grace. Don't just say, well, I'm saved and I'm through. No, there's a lot for you to learn. Hallelujah. And you can learn and you can grow. Everybody that's born uh, must grow if they're going to be healthy. And if you are born again on today through confessing that the Lord uh, was raised from the dead, you must grow. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, Tried and true And with thanksgiving I'll be a living Sanctuary For you Oh Lord, prepare me to be a saint, to every pure and holy, try and true. 
and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of all mankind, we thank you because here we are to share with church at home our Holy Communion for our brothers and our sisters. God, for you said in your word, this do ye in remembrance of me. And I thank you, God, because not only did you come to earth to live, but you came with a purpose. And the purpose was to live, to die, and to rise up again on the third day. And God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made and the life that you gave. But more than this, we thank you for gaining the victory over the sting of death, hell, and the grave. We praise you now in Jesus' name. We pray that you will bless these supplements, the bread that represents your body and the cup that represents your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you prepare for Holy Communion, as you prepare your supplements, as I have said in my prayer that we thank God for the bread that represents the body of Christ. We also thank God for the cup that represents the blood that was shed on Calvary Creek. Calvary's cross and while you're getting ready while you are preparing let's just sing a little bit of this hymn of praise and bless the Lord for his greatness and his goodness hallelujah 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 The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches. To the highest mountain oh it reaches to the high yes mountain oh it flows to the the night in which he was betrayed he took the bread and he breaked it he passed it among his disciples 
And he said, this is my body which was broken for you. Let us eat together. Hallelujah. In the same like manner, he took the cup that he declared to be the New Testament of his blood that was shed for remission of sin. Thank God for the remission of sin. Let us drink together. the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things has done with his power he has saved us with his power he has raised us to God be the glory the things for the things for the things he has done hallelujah Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.